You're listening to the Public Health Epidemiology Careers Podcast, Episode 37. Welcome to the Public Health Epidemiology Careers Podcast, where we explore public health epidemiology careers and share tips and strategies to help you enter or transition into the field. And now your host, Dr. Charlotte Hughes-Huntley. Greetings, everyone, and thank you for listening to this episode. I really appreciate all of you for tuning in. On this episode today, I'm going to talk to you about addressing some common public health career challenges. Before we jump into that topic, I'd like to thank all of you for listening. I thank all of you who are new to the podcast and who have also been listening for a long time. Um, There are some new subscribers to the podcast and some who've been here for a long time as well. So I really appreciate those of you who subscribe. I found out recently that Player FM hosts our podcast show on their platform. Now, it's been hosted there for quite a while, but I just recently found out. So it's a multi-purpose platform app where people can find the shows that they care most about and they're able to download and listen to podcasts um, even when you're offline. So the thing that I want to uh, say a thank you to Player FM is that I found out we were sort of featured high in their rankings. They searched for different podcasts under different topics And our show is ranked among the best public health podcasts that they could find, as well as among the best epidemiologist podcasts that they could find. I mean, we're literally right at the top of the list there. So as and and, um, this is a recent update, April of 2018. So thank you for that, as well as um, the people who subscribe. We have a, a small amount of people who subscribe and listen through that platform. So I really appreciate those of you who subscribe and listen through Player FM. So I would like to read to you guys a review. I'd like to thank Jamie for sending this message to me recently. Jamie is an, a professor and she wrote a, re- a review Um to a webinar that I've been conducting. So in the month of April, I conducted several uh, live webinars around the the promotion of the new public health careers workshops. In the webinar, I teach three ways to get experience right now in public health. And in sharing in that training, I talk about the three ways that they can get experience right now. Um, And then I also introduce the workshops as a tool to be used to help. So, I wanted to just read this review that I received back. Jamie wrote, great webinar. I say these things in my classes, as you mentioned, which I did talk about, but it's so good to hear us all offering the same practical advice. Wonderful job. Jamie, thank you so much. If you're listening to this podcast episode right now, I just want to let you know that I appreciate you writing that to me, sending me that message. Um, I thank all of you who've made comments because this web, this webinar series has been extremely popular. Um, I, like I said, I hosted several of them live and I really did not intend to share recordings. However, because of the popularity, I've made them available. So if you're interested in attending that training, as students have been advised to attend the training, and Jamie is not the only professor or instructor who's reached out to me making a similar comment. Several of people have shared the the posts that they've seen about the webinar. So students, if you're interested in attending that training, learning about how to get experience right now in public health and learning more about the workshops, then you can find a link for this at my website. So drchhuntley.com, go to the resources tab, and you'll find a link to the webinar training, um, three ways to get experience in public health right now. And you'll be able to also get a great introduction to the workshops that are available. Okay, on that note, let's jump right into the topic for this episode. So this uh, this topic sort of emerged from a combination of things, um, some discussions I've had with a few different people and some notes and posts I've read on different places on the different social media sites, you know, in our groups and, and in different platforms where I hang out. So What is interesting to me, um, even in a a few discussions, actually, it's come up quite a bit. And so when something starts to surface a lot and I notice it, then it sort of gets on my radar. And I think that it's probably worth having a little bit more of a, 
you know, maybe explore the topic, dig a little bit and uh, start to kind of explore, you know, where is this coming from and how can we address it? So what I want to point out are a couple of challenges that I noticed or commonly mentioned lately. And I'd like to start out by saying, number one, it's not always about location. One of the things I've noticed, and this is really the common thread here, is the challenge that's centered around location, meaning that one of the challenges many people are facing with regards to careers in public health is their location. Ironically, it doesn't matter where you located, it seems that there still seems to be the challenge. For example, I've heard from people who live in major cities like Atlanta, Georgia, and Washington, D.C., and their view is that the market is saturated or that there are no real job opportunities left in public health. The field is dying out. I've heard those comments. For people who live in rural areas, small towns, so I hear, you know, comments or either hearing them or reading them. Um, small town limitations. So the town is too small. Um, we're limited. I'm limited because of this rural area. Or we only have one or two local government jobs and, you know, I just don't know what else is here. Uh, then I hear country limitations even. I spoke with someone who said maybe there's more opportunities in another country. You know, my this was someone who lived in Europe and, you know, they were referring to their country and being limited in their country compared to a neighboring country. I've heard this from um, uh, from those some people who even live in Africa and have rich experience in but yet they feel limited in opportunities where they lived in Africa. And I don't remember specifically their country. And then I've heard about the, you know, like I said, the the region area and being those limitations. And I just found that really interesting that people, no matter where the location, it's the challenge is, okay, well, I'm in the city, but I'm limited here. And then if you're in the re, uh, the the rural areas, you're limited because it's a rural area, a small town, and then you're limited from country to country. So I really just started to explore that a little bit. I even um, began to hear beyond the the location is um, another challenge recently. And I think I was something more of what I read. Well, I know I had this discussion as well. So this was something I read and also in a, in a discussion where people who have their master's of public health feel that their options, their job options are limited because it goes to the people that have their PhD. So the people that have their master's of public health feel that they're, you know, losing out to those who have their PhD. And then I hear from people who have their PhD say that, well, I'm, we're limited because there's so many people with their master's degree in public health, their MPH, and they have so much experience that they're being selected over those who have a PhD and less experience. So I really thought, all of this was interesting. And I guess I sit in a really unique spot because people do come to me with these questions because of the way I've positioned myself. And also, you know, I read it, of course, in those the platforms that I'm on, and I just begin to think a little bit. And I begin to question uh, in a few conversations and start asking and, and go a little bit further. And every single time I explored this a little bit further in conversation. Now, there are many times I didn't engage in texting or typing the messages back and forth because I just I don't always have the time to. But if I'm in a conversation here lately, especially as it's been it, as it comes up, I take the moment to just ha- go there in the conversation, the verbal conversation. So the and um, the the thing that really comes around is. I guess I've just figured out that there are few ways it always comes down. Okay. I I really just, just say it, it really always comes down to being unclear about what they really want. Now in the people that I've actually talked to and that I've gone a little bit further with, it really comes down to that. So it really seems to be more of the confusion around, 
you know, or not being really clear of what they really want, which leads to confusion about, you know, there's confusion about what the opportunities are. Because if you're not really clear about what you want, then I can understand there's confusion about where those opportunities are. There's confusion about uh, what those opportunities look like. If you're not really clear about what you want to do, then of course it's going to be difficult to find it. Um, then it causes confusion about, you know, what skills are really needed because you're chasing around looking for this skill set or comparing yourself to another person who has these credentials and you're looking at their skills and you're looking at all these different things in comparison, but that just yields confusion. And then it further leads to, into ineffective networking, because if you're not clear about what you want, and there's confusion around what the opportunities look like. Obviously you can miss the opportunities because you don't really know what you're looking for, or what you want. You're not clear about the skills that are needed. You're listening because if you listen to one person who say you should do this, this, and that for this field, and that applies to that field. But if that's not really where you want to be, you could listen to someone else who's in just a slightly different position. It could be as simple difference as chronic disease to infectious disease. And then you're trying to to follow all those things and do those things. And then you switch and you hear something else. And then you're just bouncing all over because there's really no clarity around what you really want. It just leads to then, you know, the, like I said, the ineffective networking, the ineffective personal branding, which is related to networking. But, you know, not only are you not really seeking the right opportunities, not, you know, the incorrect or the improper opportunities that are coming to you, or let's put it this way, the opportunities that are coming to you based on the way you've branded yourself and the confusion, those opportunities are not looking the way you are are appealing to you because of course they're being drawn to you in the cloud of confusion. So it just leads to really less effective efforts, you know, cloudy focus, feelings of overwhelm because you're just overwhelmed with so much out there and so much to do. And then it leads to the frustration. You become frustrated and sometimes you're frustrated and overwhelmed and you can't really understand where it's all stemming from. But, you know, as I thought about this and I listened to so many people and really broke this down, it really comes down to being clear about what you want. And I'm not just talking about a title on a job. I mean, really becoming clear about what you want. Then everything else can start to, the layers, you know, unfold after that. The core is really getting clear about what you want. Like I said, not title, okay? But go a little bit under that surface and and really connect with what you want to do. Now, let me just share a story with you. And this is something that happened to me recently. I was approached by a recruiter, um, a recruiter for a particular company, and I'm going to be vague for obvious reasons. Um, But, and I'm changing just slightly, just so that it, like I said, I just want to be professional. But it's important for me to share this because I think it really illustrates the point that I'm trying to make. So I was approached by a recruiter for a company and they wanted to discuss opportunities based on a recommendation um, that she received. It was a female recruiter. So she she said that someone um, just told her that I was the person, a, a person that she would should really talk to. So she was, she didn't tell me who that person was because they have these little confidentiality po- uh, policies and, and I was, I was fine with all of that. So we, we had a discussion and we talked about my experience. Now it, we didn't talk about a play by play of what I did, every detailed description of my job duties and previous jobs. And, you know, I'll pause there for a second. I think that so many times and because, I mean, I'm putting myself in this. In the past, I definitely felt this way, and I've been in this situation at different points. But when it comes down to a job opportunity, sometimes we get in the fascination of whatever that job is, and we just feel like, okay, we need that job. We want to get that job. It's better because it's too her, you know, the, the salary's a little higher, or it looks a certain way. But it's not really being connected, you know, beyond the title, but really being connected with what you want, what your goals are. So another thing I want to just mention here too, is often when we think about interviewing, you know, we, it's, we get nervous. That's like a normal reaction, but I really challenge you to think about it as, like I said, it was a discussion of my experience and you really need to do that because regardless of whether you're 
you know, you're, ta- you're speaking with a, the, the top end recruiter of executive level positions only, or if you're speaking with a very entry level, you know, re- uh, recruitment office of, at an ordinary company at a, you know, more basic, they all have the same objective. They want, they're trying to see if you would be a good fit for their organization. So regardless of how, you know, polished their skills are, they're still, their objective is still the same. So you really have to think about that and remember that. And then also be real clear about the fact that it's a two-way conversation. That interview is about the employer, the the recruiter assessing you as a potential candidate for their role, but also for you to assess that organization as a good fit for you and your agenda and what you want. So that takes time. I get it. But just it's important that I'm just emphasizing it now because it's really, really important when you're clear about what you want, then you can view it in this light a whole lot easier. So it just takes a little practice, a little bit of time, but the clearer you are about what you want and more focused you are, the easier it is to really look at it that way and approach it that way. So back to my story, we had this de- you know, we had this discussion and we talked about my top line, my, you know, like top line, top level achievements, you know, what that meant to the company. Um, for example, I had helped to develop a resource for the community, which is like a specific population. Okay. And it solved a problem. The problem was that there was this lack of insights, lack of education, this gap that needed to be filled. So I helped to develop this product that solved a problem. You know, we discussed the skills that were, you know, that I applied and that I used. We discussed the challenges, we worked as a team. So discussed the challenges on the team. We discussed how, you know, how we overcame those challenges and then the lessons that were learned. So this was the discussion that we had. It wasn't, I, my duties was, you know, listed out the duties and what they were the tasks. It wasn't task oriented. It was about those top line, you know, achievements and challenges and the discussion of the lessons learned and on a very high level. And we, you know, you can only have this kind of discussion when you're really clear about what you've done, how it aligns with, you know, you, your goals and and how it prepares you for what you want and where you want to go. So when you f- complete a task or project at work, regardless of where you work, they're tasks or projects. So when you complete something, it's your responsibility to make sure that you take the time to reassess what, you know, review what you've done, what you've gone through, make some notes while you're in the moment. And I don't mean literally stop at work and do it, but, you know, take some of your own time you know, maybe the weekend after a closing date of some big major project or meeting a deadline, you know, have ongoing notes where you can update uh, in your own records what happened. Keep, you know, uh, back and I'll even go way back to my days in in laboratory science. And I, I can't remember where I got this tip from, but the technology changes in the laboratory so quickly. So when you are using equipment in one part of the lab and you've been trained on, it's important to note the information about that equipment and the details about it. Because, you know, if you work in an area, you may learn all sorts of equipment. They may change out over the years, but when you get ready to transition into something else, it's important to be able to discuss what you've done and not just recall or rely on your memory but to have that specific information so you can have those discussions, it's really your responsibility to be able to, uh, to be able to say how you fit, to be able to demonstrate your skills and ability. And then you get to decide what parts of those, what skills do I really want to highlight in this conversation that's going to help them to see that I am a good fit for this position, you know, because you just don't talk about everything and leave it to them to figure out. In in a, in that sense, but you want to help them out by demonstrating. You, know, you can say, okay, well, I'm experienced in this part of the lab. Well, give them more specific examples. How did you handle this problem? So those are the kinds of things that when you are when you're you know moving back into this whole public health conversation, when you're clear about the, you know your experience in a task, in a job, in a project, and what that meant, um, then you can have that kind of discussion with a potential employer. Um, And you don't have to just say, we did this and I helped on the team and let them try to figure it out. Because 
there's there's competition, you know. So if you can help pre- present yourself and give them that experience and and sh- help them to see w- how you are best fit, not just based on the fact that you're saying I'm a good fit, but you're saying I'm a good fit because this is what I've done and this is how I handle it and this is how I gained that skill set and this is where I applied it. And you're giving them, you're laying it out for them. So that's how you can have a really effective um, discussion. But if you're not really clear about where you want to go, what you want to do, you're not going to understand what skill sets are important for you to discuss because it aligns with that position. You know what I mean? It's really important that you get clear. And I, I uh, I realized that very much so as I was having this and going through this process. So, you know, more than, um, I guess it was really interesting how it really evolved and came all full circle because this was kind of, I think even thinking about it now, it kind of surprises me at my, how I handled it in a way that I had not, you know, probably six or seven years ago, not in the same way. Although I guess that's the nature of continuing to grow and progress, right? So although my my experience and my skills, I mean, this recruiter was so excited to hear me have that discussion, to hear me, you know, explain to her what I, to articulate that. And she was so excited. She was, she was really just flipping out. <laughs> oh, this is so perfect. And uh, she didn't tell me about the position until we discussed my skill set. And I discussed um, what I wanted. I discussed, I guess I discussed myself. I, I presented myself based on what I wanted to highlight. Um, so it matched really well with what this position um, was looking for. Okay. The description. It was almost, she said in her own words, it was almost a perfect match. Um, so she was really excited. We talked about that position for a while. We had that conversation. This was a separate conversation, but when she told me about the position, you know, what they were looking for, what they wanted to do. And it really did align. It was on paper, a great match. Um, it was more than just, I mean, the title was perfect. Okay. The salary was phenomenal. (laughs) Okay. There was, it was amazing all the way around. No doubt about it. However, (laughs) I had to look beyond the title and really look into what that position, the goals of that. I mean, I asked questions, you know, about their, their, uh, their plans and what this would look like moving forward and their goals. And it just did not line up with what I know I want to do and where I want to go. So it was almost, crazy to think that I passed up that wonderful, amazing opportunity on one sense, but then it really was that I did not have to really, it it was an easy decision for me to make because I was so clear about what I want. And like I said, it's not about the title. The title was perfect. It was the other stuff that came after the, after I looked at the title and the income and everything else, it was the mission, the vision. It just did not line up. So I thanked them and I, you know, it, we did not progress any further with that, but here's the deal. It was really a win-win situation for me and for that company, because on the surface, I could have accepted it and been super excited about the yeah, other titles. Great. And the money looks great. The company would have been excited to have the skill set and, and the, you know, the fit and the journey would be able to be, we could we'd move forward. But then when the newness wears off and things settle down, I would not be where I want to, you know, it would have taken me off track, which would have just slowly but surely progressed back to that same situation. I would slowly become less motivated. It would feel much more like a job. I would start to feel kind of, you know, clamped down, a little bit resentful. I'd either get into this mundane cycle of just doing the job and not really loving what I do, but just it's a job. Um, and maybe even a little bit of, you know, overwhelming frustration, um, the frustration for sure over time. And then there just becomes that point where I, I'm not, you know, if you, you start to veer off slightly, you won't notice it at first, but after a while, you're so far off from where you wanted to be that, you know, you're not happy, you're, you're frustrated, resentful, and, then the company, you know, it, it could even be reflected in your work, your job performance. So, you know, it's just, it's just 
really summing up and just hitting that point home. I felt good about that decision because it was not what I really wanted, where I really wanted to go. Um, and I just felt like it was, I would have done myself a disservice and it will ultimately the company. So in saying all of that, um, I really want to wrap this all up by just emphasizing that it's important to get clarity around what you want to do. Okay. Everything starts with clarity for your vision, mission, what you're passionate about. Um, back in podcast episode number 16, I talked about the importance of finding your passion for public health and how you can allow that to help you and, you know, drive you forward. If you guys are having any issues in that area, if you have not heard that podcast, I definitely recommend listening to podcast episode number 16. Then, I say that once you get clear about what you want to do, the next step is you've got to have a strategy. There's no, that's not even negotiable. It Getting where you want to go requires a strategy. So either you are, if you're a student, then the best option, the best suggestion I could have for you is to use your school's resources. Maximize the resources that are available to you as a student while you're in school. And I'm going to reference you to podcast episode number nine because I devoted an entire episode to exactly that topic. That would be your best bet for developing a strategy. You've got to have a game plan. And then for graduates, those of you who have already completed your degree, and you just have not been able, if any of what I described fits you, you've completed your degree and you're feeling that either someplace that you don't want, you're working because of course you have to, you have responsibilities, but it's not where you want to be. And you are feeling the frustration and the cloud and you're unclear or any of that resonated with you. You need a strategy, a strategy to get you where you want to go. And if you don't have that or need help developing one, or would just simply like to work with me to develop one, then you should really You need to find out more about building your public health career strategy. That's a program from my website. You can click on the program tab and you can uh, find out the latest information with that. I know that's going to be coming up soon. The enrollment is not always open. So you may, if you're interested in that, you need to get on that wait list because you can join that program. um, If you like to, you know, like I said, help with developing the strategy, whether you do it on your own, you get some help somewhere with, with me or someone else, you need a strategy. Okay. All right, guys, that is all I have for today. It is really important. I hope that it helped you. And I hope that you guys are going to take some action. Students, graduates, you got both have resources there. I'll link to both of those episodes again in the show notes for this episode. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for listening to the Public Health Epidemiology Careers Podcast at drchuntley.com.